Today I'm going to show how I put three pin connectors to shielded wire to make mic cables. I've always wondered to see how long this actually takes. So I will have a clock in the background so you can see exactly how much time it takes and how much maybe money I'm losing or paying myself by building them myself instead of buying them on eBay for about 20 bucks. Most of the cheaper ones on eBay are made from offshore labor. The ones made in the United States, typically maybe 25 bucks for a 20 footer using good quality cable and connectors. I prefer the Switchcraft connectors. They are by far my favorite. I have some that I made in 1978 that are still working well. I've already done the male end, so now I'll be doing the female end. The first thing I'll do is cut about an inch of insulation off the end of the wire here. The best cable, in my view, is fully shielded like this. The disadvantage is that it's much more tedious to work with. You have to spend the time separating out all the strands of the braid in order to use it. Next, I'll release the casing from the connector itself, like this. Loosen up the two set screws here so that we'll be able to insert this over the cable. This can be difficult to get around here sometimes. So one of the things I've been doing recently is putting a little bit of lubricant on the connector. In this case an A3F from Switchcraft. WD-40. Careful not to use too much because it's going to make other parts of the process difficult, as you'll see in a minute. Much easier to do it this way with the lubricant there. In fact, I'll take a good napkin and remove some of the excess. Stay hydrated. So now we separate the braid. doesn't really take all that long, but if there was an easier way to do it, I would be all ears. Probably the best option is to use the type of cable that is not braided like this. Maybe has a drain wire running along the shield. It's probably good enough for most applications. I don't believe I've ever heard noise at a gig from a shielded microphone cable. tip sleeve guitar cables all the time. High Z, but anyway. Reminds me of Rapunzel's hair. There's uh, another feature or attribute of this cable. Is it's got cloth running all along the 
braided shield. So then you have to take the time to separate those. Which is again a little bit more tedious than we might like. Use a single edge to cut away the cloth and inadvertently a little bit of the wire. Speaking of which, uh, <clears throat> this particular braid, it will make it easier in the soldering step if we actually lose some of these braids, which I'm glad I'm thinking of that now. So I'm going to cut maybe 30% of them away right now. because the hole in the connector is not big enough to handle the gauge that this wire becomes once it's all twisted together. This particular belt-in cable I'm using here is three conductor with the shield and I do not use the third conductor. So I'll just cut that away color code I've been using for for years, I believe it's the standard, is shield is number one, white is number two, and black is number three. The way I remember that is there's no color on the wire here, there's white here and black, so it gets darker or more color as you go higher in number, just a little memory aid that I use there. And you can see on this particular female connector it goes one, two, three. Which means one will be up top, two over here, and three at the bottom. Okay. Something I do sometimes is put a little bit of heat shrink on the drain wire there just to lessen the chance of short. Put a little bit too much on there. Might be just right, we'll see. Don't have a heat gun yet, so we use the old lighter, the big. Doesn't quite shrink enough to cover that gauge of wire, but should be sufficient for what we're doing. Next, we're going to trim off about an eighth of an inch of insulation from here. White. And black. These old strippers are tough. tin all of the leads to make the soldering easier. You'll notice also there's cloth coming out of these too. It might lessen the noise of the cable, I'm not sure, but it sure makes building them a little harder. Hopefully we can burn this off without setting off the smoke alarm. There we go. Smell. And now we will tin each of these using the temperature controlled weller. One of the best eBay purchases ever. Maybe about 15 years ago. 20 bucks. They're about 99 new. Need to get just enough solder on here so that the leads get tinned, but you don't have too much wicking. Wicking is where the solder creeps up into the wire and it can make it stiff and more likely to break. So three is always at the bottom. I'm not sure if you can see that there, but uh, that's typically the one I start with. 
three being black. First one's usually the hardest one because you've got to keep your work steady. I've got a couple of those miniature vices that come with soldering kits or whatever, but I sure do have a lot of trouble making them work, so I usually just use a heavy tool like a pair of pliers or wire cutters and just try to do it this way. It would really help to have three hands in this case. If you can get something to stay mechanically just long enough for you to get the first one, then the subsequent ones are usually easier. You can see that angle there. Once the solder sets, it's important not to move the wire at all. That results typically in a cold solder joint which is brittle and much more likely to fail. I've got these nifty uh, glasses here that I use to inspect the work. I to get real close to see The other thing I do is I pull on this to make sure that we've got a good mechanical connection. That one feels good. Sometimes we'll have to redo these. Another thing I'll do if I've got a cold joint there but it's still got a little bit of mechanical connection, I will do the other two to physically hold it in place and then I'll come back and resolder. So we've got number two is the closest to me. I'll do that one next. The male ends are a little bit easier because you can stick the wire in there and there's a little lip that it that holds it on. These do not have that, so you really got to put it right where it needs to go. Sometimes I'll hold it down with the screwdriver or something. But you got to be careful because you shake just a little bit, it will cause that cold joint I mentioned. checking the time here. I'm guessing these take about 10 to 15 minutes each depending upon issues you run into and so forth. Now we're ready for the final connector here. Final terminal. Sounds very macabre. Final terminal. helps to have really good eyes when doing this because you really want the solder to not just adhere to the wire but to the slot that the wire is going into 
some people will tin those slots first, which may make it easier for the solder to adhere. It's important to make sure things cool before trying to move them to prevent that brittle connection. And we'll do an inspection with the loop. This is called a, a loop. Good. Slide this over. Get this on. I may need more of the WD-40. We'll see. These are reverse threaded screws here, so when you go clockwise, it actually moves the screw up, which tightens. It's interesting how they designed it that way. Canon ones are not like that, but I just like the Switchcraft. Those are my preferred ones. Doing these for over 30 years. I still very rarely test them because they almost always work right away. The other thing I'll do is I'll mark the length on here so that when I'm at the gig I can pick up the right size mic cable to keep things a little neater. And that's it. Check the time and see how long it took. And here is the completed cable. Wrapped up, labeled, 19 feet and ready to rock.